Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCabe Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers. So thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage you to share it with family, with friends, with loved ones, and with coworkers. And you can do that by copying the link on this video and emailing it. And you can also post it to Facebook and Twitter and all your favorite social media sites. So make sure to share the good news at the end of this message. Also, I have a website, McCadeMarshall.com, that you can check out at the end of the video. And you can subscribe there to Word of the Week to receive the, the Word of the Week every single Sunday in your email inbox. And I also have a YouTube channel at youtube.com, and my channel is just McCade Marshall, and make sure you subscribe to that if you're on YouTube. All right, well, the word of the week for this week is, God is always good. And inside every one of us is a desire to know God. We want to know what God is like. Is he good? Does he care about me? Is he there? Does God even exist? The world is full of religions and different answers about God. Some say God is us. We are God unto ourselves. Other religions say you must do good works to go to heaven. Other religions say just don't harm anyone else. Others say to actually harm others who don't believe like they do. In a world that is lost and quite frankly is in complete confusion about God, it is so important to go to the source of information that tells us exactly who God is. The Holy Bible is that source of information. The Bible contains the oracles of God written by people full of God's Holy Spirit. Each and every page of the Bible is the Word of God. If you want to know who God is, read the book He has given us that testifies about Himself. Hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. When you begin to go to the Bible for answers, it is going to change you. It is going to change the way you think and the way you do things, and most certainly for the better. In the book, of the, the book of Psalms, the psalmist tells us the purpose of God's word is to guide us on the path God has for us to walk. Psalm 119 verse 105 tells us, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. One reason God has given us his holy word to read is because God is always good. Everything about him is good. His nature is good. His character is good. His gifts are good. He would not have given us the Bible if he did not intend for us to use it for good. As a matter of fact, he wants us to use it all the time. His word is his gift to us, to mankind. One way we learn God is always good is by studying the scriptures. Psalm 145, verse 8 through 9 declares, The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. What the psalmist is saying right now is God is not mad at you. On the contrary, God is madly in love with you. You are his creation. He is merciful and compassionate towards you. 
He desires nothing but good things for your life. When you make poor choices, God is not angry, but rather he is grieved. The scripture says in Ephesians 4 verse 30 that his spirit actually grieves when you aren't living right. He grieves because he only wants what is the very best for you. To say it the opposite way, another way, if God didn't grieve when we aren't living for him, then it can be implied that he doesn't really care about us. But because he does care about us, he cares very deeply for us, of course it grieves his spirit when we are off course, not living right. The reason he is merciful towards us is because when we mess up, he loves us. He wants to restore us. He desires for us to reflect his, to reflect his goodness as we go about our lives. Jesus set the example for how to live out the goodness of God. Acts 10 verse 38 says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The scripture says that, God, that Jesus went around doing good. He went around helping people. He went around healing people of their diseases and their infirmities. And in the same way, God has anointed us with the Holy Spirit and with his power. We are called to live like Jesus did. We are called to go around doing good, helping others, praying for the sick, helping heal those who are hurt and who are oppressed by the devil, by the enemy. When you love others and help them in their faith journey, you are displaying the goodness of God. God has given us his good spirit to lead, guide, and direct us. He has poured out the oil of his goodness on our lives to make us better. As you go out this week and every week, know that God is always good. He is on your side. He is working all things to your good and for his divine purposes. Know God is always good. When you know that God is always good, it makes trusting him all the more possible, so much easier. If you know God is always good, when he asks you to do something, you can trust him. Or while you're waiting for something to happen, something you've prayed about, because you know he is good, it's that much easier to wait expectantly and trust God's timing and to trust the, the result is going to be good because God is always good. When you know that you know God is always good, obeying him is fulfilling and it's rewarding. It doesn't mean following God is always going to be easy as we are called to take the high road even when it's not popular. But it does mean you can have confidence that God is leading you down the po best possible path for your life. The Apostle Paul tells us to have an attitude of thanksgiving when God is good to us. Whenever we experience good things in life, whenever we experience God's goodness, it's so important to have a grateful heart, to not just expect God to be good to us, but to be thankful when we experience a blessing. And Apostle Paul actually instructs Timothy and the church and he, when he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. He says, For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Receive God's goodness today and thank Him for His creation that was meant to be enjoyed. So I just want you to get that in your spirit this week, that God is always good. And I know sometimes when we go through a hardship or a battle or a loss or something bad happens, it's easy to question God. God, why did this happen? Why did you allow this? And sometimes we may never get those answers. We never understand. Or maybe in the future, years down the road or months down the road or a week later, we'll understand, oh, that's why this or that happen. But sometimes we don't get that answer. And it's so important, even when we don't understand, to remember God is 
always good. He's always on his throne and he's always working things out for his children. So have confidence today that God is not the enemy, but he is the friend. He is the one who loves you. He is the good father and he is always good. So I want to pray over you right now that you would get that message into your spirit that God is always good. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just listen along as I pray over this message. Father God, thank you so much for your goodness today and every day. Thank you, Lord, that you have lavished us with your love and with your goodness through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, whom it is through him and for him and to him you pour out good things on our lives. You have given us your Son's Spirit so that we wouldn't be helpless, but that we would know how to walk and how to live, to live with purpose, and to know that your goodness follows us around everywhere we go. And because we have your goodness, we can be good to others and they can taste the goodness of God as well in their own lives. So Lord, I pray over everyone listening and watching right now, if there's any bitterness or any hardness of heart, or maybe just things they have questions about they don't understand, Lord, that they would get this message in their heart that you are always good and you have nothing but goodness stored up for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to tell you the first step to coming in into right relationship with God your Father is through a personal relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. There is no good deed or no good act that you can ever do to make God love you. God showed His love for you when He gave up His Son, His one and only Son, Jesus, on the cross. He died for your and my sins so that we could spend eternity with him. It was a display of his love and his power when he rose Jesus from the dead. And we too will be risen from the dead and spend eternity with God our Father when we place our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ. So if you've never asked Jesus to come and live in your heart, I just want to say the simple prayer of salvation and you can pray along with me and invite Jesus to come and abide in your heart. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just repeat after me this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, if you prayed that simple prayer, the Bible says that you have been spiritually born again and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you are now in the household of God. And you will spend eternity with God your Father when you die and go to be with the Lord in heaven. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step in your faith journey is to be water baptized and Get involved in a good Bible-based church and Christian community and let people encourage you in your faith. And pray every day. Talk to God like you would your best friend and read your Bible and see what the promises of God are and learn what the Word of God says. And I promise you that will help you grow in your faith journey. And make sure to tell someone, tell a pastor, tell someone you know that is a Christian that you gave your life to Christ and let them encourage you in your faith. And I also have a website full of a lot of great resources that can help you. And my website is just my name, www.mccademarshall.com. And on my website, there's videos just like this, full of different messages of faith that will encourage you in your faith journey with God. And you can watch those videos and re-watch messages. And I'm also a writer, and I have a, a newsletters I email out and mail out every three months to my subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to receive my newsletters, you can do that, it's completely free, and that's on my website. Just fill out one of the forms on my website and I will mail you a newsletter. And I have a couple of books that you can check out and that I've written, and the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. 
And Tasting the Goodness of God is a 31-day daily devotional I wrote that you read one devotional every day. You can read it before you go to school or before you go to work or at bedtime. It will really just help you learn how to spend time with God each and every day. And each devotional has a message and it has a word for the day. And it has scriptures from the Old and New Testament and then questions if you like to journal um, that will just challenge you to live out what you just read. So if you don't have Tasting the Goodness of God, you can order that on the website. And I have another book out called Breathe. And Breathe is a little longer and a little more in-depth. And it's based on a dream I had about pursuing your God-given dreams. That God wants to breathe new life into your destiny and into your purpose and into your dreams. So if you don't have Breathe, you can order that on the website. And I'd be more than happy to sign that and ship those books to you. All right, well, in closing, I just want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare you are walking into more of God's goodness today and every day. Your trust in God is rising like never before as you come to know and experience that God is always good. God is not withholding any good thing from you as you seek after Him. With God, nothing is impossible for you to achieve in Jesus name. Well, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.